to inform next. One of the things that most people think about is, uh, you know, as far as AMT, it's an association, and, and they kind of stop there. Uh, but, but AMT is much more than an association. That's one of the things we wanted to convey today. Um, when we look at all the things we do at AMT, it primarily is around uh, helping businesses. So, you know, we think about driving, helping to drive uh, revenues up and, and costs down and, and try to enter into new markets and to do these types of sort of things. But for us, when you look at all of that wholesale, it's really uh, about building the communities in our industry. And it's about uh, just understanding more about equipping businesses. And so when we look at it from an association standpoint, our association is really the community in general and particularly our, our members. So there's many things that we'd like to, to convey a little bit today up front, um, but certainly I want to have a chance for our members to talk about um, their experience and how AMT has helped their business. And, and what we're going to do uh, today is just have an open mic time. <laughs> so we have with us, thankfully, uh, two presidents uh, from two of our members. So we have Glenn Fletcher from EOS North America. We have Matt Sand from 3DO, and we're gonna hear directly from them in a minute. But uh, I do wanna take a little bit of time and just show you a little bit about some of our products and services. So Jess, um, there we are. One of the driving forces that AMT has is really to advance the state of manufacturing. And, and we look at the whole the whole uh, ecosystem from not just the manufacturing technology itself, but for the materials that are a part of the upfront process. And maybe it's the quality inspection and the software and the distribution and the services and, and all this stuff. It all net net is meant to advance the state of manufacturing. And that's that's really why we get up each morning. Um, our customers are our members, but other folks have, as well. You know, one of the things we do is because of our four tech centers that are globally, uh, because of the offices we also have in Europe and in China. So we have Chennai, India, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Monterey, Mexico, uh, Shanghai, China, and the offices in Beijing and in Warsaw, Poland. We're constantly keeping a pulse on the market as a whole. And one of the things we do is to help put insight uh, and intelligence in that market data for our members and our customers. Uh, really, the end goal of that is to make sure you've got the best data for your knowledge base. What you do and how you create calculations for ROI, we, we, we don't control nor, nor do we want to dictate, but to give you the information so that you can make the best decision for your company is really what we're in the business of trying to do on the, on the intelligence side. And at the end of the day, if what AMT does does not improve your business, then we're not doing our job right. You know, that, that's kind of the, the short uh, answer to all that stuff. So we do many things and some of those you'll see here, we from market access uh, and ex exhibitions like IMTS, uh, but also international pavilions. And we still do many intelligence products. So whether it's an app on our MT Insight platform or if it's data on orders for manufacturing technology like USMTO, uh, we do a lot of different data points that get packaged in a lot of different products. And part of our job at AMT is the concierge portion, which is to hear from you, the member and the audience as to what the business need is, and then to marry up and align to those products the best that we can. And uh, constantly getting, you know, we talk about closed loop feedback and, and additive all the time. It's, it's a similar at AMT, you know, closed loop with our customer to make sure the data, the intelligence, the access, the products, every offering we have, um, can quickly help your business, right? So that's a little bit about just who AMT is. And, and we, we work through our membership as liaisons through committees and uh, tech councils to understand the quick pulse of the industry, the needs of the industry, the partnerships and alliances, because uh, there's so much information. Another thing that AMT try to do, we try to do is to filter some of that, just to know if you're looking for A, B or C, it's one, two, or three. And so we, we do a lot of liaison, a lot of hub kind of networking to make sure that members know members and members know customers the best as possible. But listen, that's just um, 
my perspective is a bit biased from, from A&T, obviously. Uh, what I'd like to do now is transition a little to our members. And uh, Glenn Fletcher, president, again, of EOS North America is with us today. Glenn, thank you for taking time out. Uh, I was hoping just for a little background, uh, why EOS North America you know, became a member, and you particularly, uh, offering to, to take and fill a, a board seat for A&T. So I'll, I'll hand the mic to you, sir. Well, thank you, Tim, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to uh, to participate. So uh, welcome to my basement in the uh, suburbs of Chicago. I'm around 20 miles north of Chicago. Um, strange times that we uh, live in. Um, we all have to uh, adapt and we all have to uh, embrace these uh, uh, difficult circumstances. So it's great to uh, to have this opportunity just to, uh, to share a few thoughts about um, the additive manufacturing industry and uh, my relationship with uh, AMT. Um, this is a, um, a, an additive virtual trade show, so probably everybody who is listening is somewhat familiar with EOS, so I won't go into a, uh, a, a large description, but just to let you know that we've been around now for 30 years. The company was founded by Hans Langer, an icon of the additive manufacturing industry in 1989. Um, and it remains a family owned company. So over those uh, 30 years, it's been a, uh, an interesting journey. Um, talk to Hans and he will tell you that story. It's, a, uh, it's really fascinating. So from very humble beginnings in basically a farmyard in Bavaria, we've grown to an organization of 1400 people with an installed base of around um, uh, 5,000 systems uh, present in virtually every uh, um, uh, location, uh, industrial location around the world. Um, for my part, I'm a 35-year uh, veteran of the machine tool industry, a background in milling, turning, grinding, all of those traditional metal cutting uh, processes. 50%, uh, around 50% of that career I spent in the UK. Uh, you will have detected from my accent that I was not born in Chicago, uh, but uh, have lived here for the, uh, the last 18 years. Um, originally moved here with um, GF Machining Solutions, aka Aji Shami, and uh, joined EOS uh, five years ago. Um, so I think the important thing for me with regards to additive manufacturing, EOS and AMT is, um, you know, there is this opinion in some circles that additive manufacturing is a competitor to traditional manufacturing. Um, and I don't see it that way. I see additive manufacturing as very much a complementary process. Um, and what I mean by complementary process, as we transition into the new industry 4.0 uh, environment, things are, are changing really quickly. You know, when you think about it, um, James Watt invented the steam engine in 17, I think it's 1776, maybe I'm a few years off, but you're around, around that time. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, humanity's presence on this earth, that's sort of a very, very short period of time ago. Um, and in a little over 300 years, we've transitioned through this industry 1.0, through the Henry Ford uh, assembly line 2.0, to the computer age industry 3.0. And now we arrive, you know, just 25 years later at uh, industry 4.0. So things are changing really fast. And I think it's really important that, in, uh, that companies like ours uh, participate in that change. And the only way to be really effective in the participation of that change is to engage. And so we don't see ourselves as a competitor to traditional manufacturing. We see ourselves and additive manufacturing as a complementary component in this new age, this new industry 4.0 digital value chain. Um, and uh, uh, it really helps to have a, uh, a partner like AMT to help guide us through that process. Because if you think about it, um, you know, AMT have um, a membership that is based upon uh, largely traditional um, um, 
uh, machine tool organizations. And additive, uh, the, the prevalence of ad additive is disrupting that in some way. But if we're clever about it and if we work together and I can use the network that is created for me as a board member of, um, of AMT, then um, this, this comfortable combination starts to make a lot more sense. So digital uh, value chain, um, additive manufacturing. Additi everybody gets the idea of additive manufacturing at the design and development phase, at the um, you know, origination and uh, the reiteration phase because of its uh, background in, um, in uh, proto rapid prototyping. So it's, you know, we see lots of cool things, lots of cool designs, nice biometric shapes, all of those good things. But ultimately, success for additive manufacturing um, uh, relies on its ability to integrate into this uh, broader um, uh, digital value chain, manufacturing uh, value chain. And so uh, whether it's through the design phase, whether it's through this, the advantages that additive brings through uh, speed to market, or whether it's um, the advantages through optimized production, I think it has to be seen as complementary, always complementary, always dovetailing into other processes. Uh, and um, uh, the ability to, uh, to work with an organization like AMT brings a lot of advantages to help facilitate that. And by the way, you know, I hate this term uh, association. I mean, I don't ever and never think of AMT. I mean, believe me, it, it, it wasn't until I uh, was in, uh, I saw the introduction to this presentation that it occurred to me that AMT was actually a trade association. I mean, I always just think of AMT as a partnership, a business partnership. Um, the work that Doug and the team are doing is, uh, is really uh, very, uh, um, uh, very valuable. Uh, both in terms of creating this network that uh, that we rely on, but also in giving us guidance with regards to the uh, you know the path to this new normal. Because you know, just as I'm sitting here uh, in my uh, basement in Chicago and not sitting there uh, at Form Next, uh, things are changing f uh, at a, a speed that is never been seen before. And we're having to adapt at a, late, at a rate that we've never experienced before. So the more partners that we have, the more relationships that we can build and the more people that we join to, uh, to uh, pursue this um, you know, new normal future, then the better it is for all of us. So, you know, yeah, I'm, uh, as I say, I've been here in the United States for 18 years. Uh, my first IMTS, which of course is a, you know, a fundamental component of, uh, of uh, AMT, was in 2002. So uh, my relationship with AMT has been robust and has endured through 18 years, and I look forward to it enduring for a, a few years yet. So that's us, and uh, that's, the, uh, that's the story of EOS and AMT. Hey, Glenn, I appreciate that. And I know Doug Woods, our president, would uh, so appreciate the thought of a partnership over the word association. I think he's been driving that since the day one. He, he walked through the doors as president. Um, that's how we view it, too. And, and I think one part of this story that, that I've taken away is the, the growing up of the additive industry and the codependence and collaboration along and complementary nature along with what we'll call it traditional manufacturing technology right now is, is becoming more and more evident, whether it's the metrology and inspection or other software to add to or to post process, all these different things. And it becomes a total solution. So we, we certainly can appreciate that. And, and that being a part of our diverse network of both members and alliances inside uh, AMT, I, I think additive companies would be surprised to see who all they can contact and touch just by one call, if you would, into us. But Glenn, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Speaking of partnerships, um, one of the amazing stories I've had a chance to hear along the way has been uh, Matt Sand and, and, and his investment and, and entrepreneurial background getting into 3DO and, and how 3DO has now become what it is today and the level of success they are attaining today. Um, Matt, thanks for taking time out. I, I know you're on, you have a board meeting today, so I want to 
just doubly appreciate the time to spend with us, but your story is awesome. And, and if you could just walk us through a little bit, you know, how AMT even got a chance to engage and help any way we could just, to, you know, uh, the mic is yeah. yours, sir. Definitely. Um, so we started 3DO back in 2016 and uh, as three entrepreneurs who co-founded the company and, and don't really have any background in manufacturing at all. So we're not from the industry and had zero industry contacts. And um, <clears throat> two of the three co-founders, not myself, but um, the other two guys got their PhDs in, in a binder jetting like technology. And when they graduated, uh, the stars aligned for us to start the company together. And we knew that there was a lot of success in prototyping um, with metal 3D printing. There was a lot of success in low volume, high value applications such as um, air, aircraft components and hip replacements and knee replacements. But we, we didn't see much competing in the high volume and low cost arena with uh, traditional manufacturing such as CNC machining and metal injection molding. And that's where, you know, with all the uh, energy and enthusiasm we had at the time, we said, we're going to crack that nut. And to do that, my two partners invented a new technology, which um, we thought would be the solution. And um, as Glenn was just commenting, it, it actually turns out that the printer is only one part of the total solution. And so since then, we've um, expanded scope from just a 3D printer to an entire factory. And the entire production line from raw materials coming in to finished parts going out is, is our technology scope, if you will. And so we consider ourselves more than uh, just a metal 3D printing technology company. Um, we consider ourselves more than a, a part supply company, although that's the end result or output that we supply. We sell parts to our customers. Um, we really look at ourselves as the next generation digital industrial platform. And that platform is um, kind of hoping to realize and what we're working very hard to realize is the potential of additive manufacturing and the potential of industry 4.0. And so that's just quick background on 3DO and our company. And I'll just uh, echo what Glenn said about uh, AMT is so much more than um, an association. It's, it's actually interesting because when you think manufacturing, sometimes these older images of older manufacturing of dark areas and dirty areas um, come to mind. And just like an association has its connotations and manufacturing is changing and, and AMT is really changing manufacturing. And so it's, uh, you, you look at their tagline, for example, advanced manufacturing is really what the association does. And when you look at um, the impact it's had on our business, it's really hard to overstate the impact that AMT has had on our business. And the first uh, impact, the first difference it made for us was at IMTS, we went to the event and that's where we met a gentleman by the name of David Burns and it was very early on probably in the first six months of the company and uh we started uh courting david to join our uh, company as an advisor and a consultant and um so imts was the first impact and david joined and then and then david started helping us see the potential of becoming a member at amt and uh, fortunately amt's rates for startups are they, they could not be more reasonable especially when you see all the benefits you get so it's they have a program for earlier stage companies that are resource constrained and uh, it's it's very reasonable and it was a no-brainer for us to sign up as a member and since we signed up as a member i think we may have used every service that amt offers at least every service that i'm aware of i'm sure there are a lot of great services that i'm not aware of that are also offered but uh, I've got a kind of a list here of the five different ways uh, AMT has impacted our business. And the first is through the events. And IMTS is the obvious of event, but AMT has also taken the lead uh, in the advanced manufacturing movement. And to do that, um, they are creating new events, um, uh, even moving these events to the West Coast, for example, that are focused exclusively on industry 4.0 type of technologies and what does the next generation of manufacturing look like that's where it's really interesting for startups like 3do where we're trying to become the next generation of manufacturing so it's inter interesting to, for us to get involved 
with the events to pitch our own vision of the future of manufacturing and also to hear other visions of what the future of manufacturing could be. And so there are just a lot of events, a lot of things happening, and we've been able to get involved much more than just participating, uh, attending, much more than exhibiting, actually becoming a part of the event, either speaking at the event or helping with strategy on the AMT. And the AMT does such a great job of pulling its members in to get the contribution and to make sure that the events are going to be blockbuster events. And that kind of leads to the second main point, which is kind of more of a subtle point, but um, I think it's very important nonetheless, and that's really on the strategy. Um, I, I mean, I've strategized with basically all of the management team at AMT on our business on what the right business model for us could be and, and how we move our business forward, what our current blockers are, and how we can get unblocked. And, it, and that's everybody from Doug Woods on down who's helped us with the strategy and taking a lot of time. I mean, these are all very busy people and they take a lot of time for their members to work with them. And something that I've benefited a lot from is just strategy discussion and conversations. Um, dovetailing with that are the industry introductions, which is another kind of major area where I've benefited. Um, through our membership in AMT, I've been introduced to other members at AMT and even um, industry introductions outside of AMT membership. And so it's such an easy way to get introduced to leadership at other companies through AMT, where the relationships have already been built at AMT. And it's mutually beneficial introduction for both sides. But at the same time, just facilitating that through AMT has been really uh, game changing for us. Um, there's another service that they offer where AMT has these centers all around the world that help with manufacturing. And the purpose of the centers, in part, is to allow you to hire employees in country and to take away all the friction and difficulty and knowledge that comes along with hiring an employee. And so as a startup, as a in, and this is uh, three years ago, as a 20-person startup, we actually had a fully legally employed employee at in Shanghai. And he was actually employed through AMT's Shanghai branch. And they took care of all the payroll, all the taxes, everything was legal and on the up and up. And I say that because if we had to do that on our own, we probably would have just paid them separately because it would have been way too difficult to navigate as a company. And it would have been way too expensive if we would have had to go that route then we wouldn't have been able to do it. And with AMT, we were able to have a, an employee in Shanghai working for us full time out of the AMT office. So he had an office to go to. He had all this payroll and everything taken care of. It was really an amazing um, service that AMT offered. And that was something else that we had taken advantage of. And then the, the last thing that I'll just um, comment in terms of things that we've benefited from is Pat's group, which is the market research group. And like I said, we're all new to manufacturing. And so as we start to have questions like, um, what is the market of metal injection molding shops? And what are the CNC machine shops? And how big are these markets? And uh, who are the key players? And, and just questions like this, Pat has a whole research team who can chase down questions for you. And if you're a member, I forget the exact time, but if the research question takes less than four hours, which is a lot of time, but if they spend less than four hours, then they don't charge you anything for it. And if it's a bigger research project where they have to go deeper, then they will charge you for it, but it's still an, a just incredibly modest fee when you look at AMT is the expert and authority in manufacturing, especially for this type of market research. And so you just, it's, they, get, they give you knowledge that you really couldn't buy publicly. And as a member, you get access to that research group for free. And so we've um, reached out to them many times and um, had a lot of great research done over the years. So that, that's kind of um, the main ways that we've benefited um, from AMT. And again, I, I just, I can't emphasize enough how big of an impact they've had on our business and how lucky we are to have AMT in our corner. Matt, I really appreciate that. I mean, your, your story at 3DO is, is exciting, continuing, and we hope we continue to, to progress as a partnership and seeing you guys just you know, take over your your slice of that pie. That's it's great news. Um, Thanks, I want to I want to bring back uh, Glenn in as well with all three of us here. 
Uh, we're going to show a video in a moment, but before we do that, I was thinking, what's, let's get back to the additive real quick. What, Glenn, would you say is the, the, the biggest challenge in EOS furthering their business in the additive industry? Uh, I think it's the same for everybody. I think the challenge that faces the additive industry is what I describe as the habits of the present. I mean, there is uh, the traditional manufacturing industry, uh, traditional subtractive, you know, milling, turning, grinding, EDMing has been around for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of uh, expertise in those fields and there's a lot of sunken cost in the factories that uh, use that equipment. Um, and uh, I think everybody sees the advantage of uh, additive manufacturing. I think everybody is reconciled to the fact it's only a question of if, not when. But it is this um, transition phase, which is, I think, the most frustrating because, you know, I have an office in uh, close to Detroit. I could probably walk from that office to five factories that have 300 CNC machines under one roof. You know, they could be turning machines, milling machines, machining centers, whatever. Um, and yeah, I'm, almost inevitably, we will be engaged with that company. We're engaged with all of the uh, leading players at, at every level of uh, manufacturing. Um, but it's, uh, you know, the, the additive manufacturing will be in a corner of the factory where it's being experimented with, where it's been played with. Maybe they will find some you know, pr production applications. But we have to also understand that that, that factory you know, has all of the sunken cost of the existing equipment, which they can't just throw away and replace with additive. Uh, and um, even more relevant is that they probably have a office floor full of, of um, engineers that have a background in traditional manufacturing and, you know, are reluctant to, to make the transition because perhaps it might expose themselves to, you know, a lack of... Um, expertise that uh, that they don't want to uh, to make evident so for me it's a question of engaging the young people the people in colleges and this is i think uh, yeah, amt can help with this a lot as well but engaging these young engineers that are really enthusiastic and see the potential of additive manufacturing and being uh, being um an, uh, evangelical about the uh, the advantages so that we start to really to to make uh, to gather momentum and to break down these barriers of the present and uh, uh, and encourage industry as a whole to start to take additive seriously rather than uh, and i think they take it seriously i mean uh, don't get me wrong i think it's taken very seriously these days we've gone way beyond you remember the print me a stradifarious um uh, cover page of the economist you know a lot of hype associated that with that we've gone beyond the hype we're in the the realms of a very, very serious industry, but there is still this resistance, um, I think best described as the habits of the present. And we now need to, you know, we have to break that uh, culture down and start to, to infiltrate in a way that brings a lot of advantages uh, for our customers. And I don't, and actually, I'm not sure that it's via additive manufacturing per se, but I think it's more about additive manufacturing's position in this digital value chain. If we can prove that we're complementary rather than adversarial to the existing processes, then I think that's the uh, that's the approach that we should take, and that's which that is what will lead us to success in the end. Got it, Matt. It could be said that the business model of 3DO is around <clears throat> breaking such habits, if you would. Um, what what do you see biggest challenge for 3DO as a company, increasing your pie in the industry and industry adoption in general? Yeah. Um, so rather than selling printers, we um, take the full burden of getting finished and used parts to customers, and that's where our business model is a little differentiated than most of the industry. And um, you know, the biggest hurdle for us is we put parts in hand, and the engineers primarily say, "How can I trust these parts?" And so there's just been, um, like with any new technology, there's been hesitation that we have to work through. And fortunately, a lot of customers, when they can save um, money on a component, so when it comes to very small, very complex geometries, we can typically save 20 to 40% versus, uh, say, a CNC machining. 
And so there, the motivation for cost is there, which is exciting. And the material properties are good, but they have to kind of prove to themselves that the material properties are good. And so that's our biggest hurdle is just getting customers kind of over that line and, and building the trust. Because when you're in production with a customer, they depend on your components. And if your components aren't on time and in spec and high quality parts, then their production line shuts down. So it's that trust building phase that um, to date has been the biggest hurdle. But I can only imagine, like Glenn was saying, h how much harder it was 20 years ago uh, versus today, where today, um, you know, metal additive is mainstream and, you know, EOS has done really incredible work to kind of get us there. So, um, you know, 3DO is beneficiary of that. But at the same time, there's still hesitation. And we just have to prove ourselves. It's like any new supplier, we have to prove ourselves. But then with the new technology, it's kind of double effort. So it extends the uh, sales cycle there. Got it. Yeah. And I can appreciate that story from my aerospace days. You know, there, there was almost printing three times as many as we needed because you had to <laughs> destructively test, not destructively test, and then finally ship an article. You know, <laughs> yeah. We're getting slowly out of that uh, because of that yeah, trust totally. building that's happening. But um, I want to take a moment and, and show a video that, that sort of expresses a little bit uh, in general AMT, and then I'll give you guys the final word afterwards. Manufacturing, the bedrock of the modern world. The Industrial Revolution gave us the mill, the lathe, the grinder, small gestures that left large strokes. And through the decades, AMT members dreamt, built, pushed. Advancements came in waves, their spray lighting new horizons in the sunlight and in the warmth left for others to feel. Our members reached for possibilities that others could not see. Since 1902, AMT has seen it all because our members built it with the tools we gave them. Today, we embark upon the digital revolution where manufacturing technology opens new doors to new realities and to solutions to questions we couldn't dream of. Today, we continue to shape the future of our industry by advancing new tools for a new age. The place where leadership, manufacturing, and technology come together in unity. AMT, Advancing Manufacturing Technology. So that's, you know, uh, us in a nutshell and, and some words that always uh, come to mind when I see that is the dreamt and the pushed part. And that's, you know, that's what you guys are doing day to day. You're, you're dreaming up the next step. You're pushing the boundaries. Um, for the last word, I'd like to hear sort of, Glenn, wh what's the next big area for you to push EOS as far as a company and a technology leader? Uh, industrialization. I mean, that is the, uh, and industrialization is part of this digital environment. That's where our future lies. To be able to supply robust, uh, reliable, consistent, factory-ready equipment that transitions from the uh, rapid prototyping environment to the full-scale production environment. Uh, I think that that's the secret of success, and that's where we're uh, deploying most of our resources these days and putting most of our um, research and development efforts as well as our um, um, production um, capability. So yeah, it's uh, industrialization in a digital age, I think is the way that I would summarize it. Got it, well said. Matt, how do you push the next boundary as 3DO? Yeah, we um, just opened a new chapter in our company where we moved into uh, a 40,000 square foot facility we were playing in our 10,000 square foot facility. We were starting to play Tetris, moving equipment around and trying to make it all fit. And so we moved into a new facility and it's very much a new chapter for us. So we're excited about 2021 as we really punched the gas and the full platform has come together. So um, we'll be announcing the, the move soon and a lot of other stuff. But I guess I'll just close out by saying, you know, if you're not an AMT member and you're watching this, then you should go get a membership immediately. That's how it was positioned to me by David Burns. And that's how I would encourage everybody listening is they, they should be members. It helps the entire industry. There are a lot of great reasons for yourself, selfishly, why you should have a membership. But there's also a lot of great reasons for the industry as a whole. And so working together to guide the future of manufacturing 
is really what's exciting about getting involved at AMT. So if you're not yet a member, I would highly encourage you to go out and, and join. Appreciate hey, it. And by, and, and by the way, if you want, uh, if agility is a characteristic of a uh, modern and progressive organization, the way that uh, AMT has transitioned from a physical pro a, a provider of physical events to a provider of virtual events is a perfect example of that. So yeah. chapeau, hats off to, uh, to everybody there. They do a great job. Thank you, Glenn. Certainly uh, tons of kudos to all of our team there led by, by Peter, Michelle, and Bonnie. Um, amazing, amazing pivot, if you will, to, to borrow some lingo from the, from the industry. Uh, <laughs> listen, we don't see the state of manufacturing advancing without additive. We don't see it advancing without digital. We don't see it without groups like and companies like 3DO and EOS. So, gentlemen, thank you for your time uh, today. For Matt Sand, president of 3DO, and for Glenn Fletcher, president of EOS North America. I'm Tim Shambara, VP and CTO of AMT. Thanks, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Thank you.